All right, new day, new laptop to repair. And this time we have an Alienware 17R4. And the customer said that the laptop suddenly shut off and when it turned back on and was told it was a motherboard issue. Let's see if we can get this figured out. This is an older Alienware. It's a seventh gen i7. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, let's figure out if it turns on. The customer said it doesn't turn on, so let's check that out. Pressing the power button, nothing's happening. Let's go ahead and plug in the power. Okay, and you see the charger shuts off. So this right here is my Dell power meter. This is a, uh, a box that I made, just a 3D printed case with a voltmeter. And you can plug in any Dell charger into this, and then it will show you what currents and volts are coming out of the charger. Uh, in this case, when I plugged in the charger into the laptop, it shorted out the, the charger. It shorted out the Dell power adapter and put it into protection mode. So that means we're gonna have to open up this laptop to figure out what's going on. All right, and the bottom is off. All right, let's take a look here. It looks like they have a two and a half inch uh, mechanical drive here. Uh, they have an NVMe, uh, one terabyte hard drive, a couple memory sticks here. Um, there's not much you can access without taking the entire bottom cover off here, so that's, that's kind of the issue with this machine. Um, so I can't really do any measurements or tests, and since it's a short on this board, I'm gonna have to take this whole thing apart. So let's go ahead and get this bottom cover taken off. This laptop's actually in really good condition for being seven years old. And this is about the lifespan of these machines, and so they start to fail around uh, five to seven years, and so this one's lasted seven years, which is pretty good. And the bottom is off. And I'm actually amazed on how clean this laptop is. I mean, remember, this is a seven-year-old laptop. It has a seventh-gen i7 uh, chip in it. But look at these fans. I mean, all of this looks almost new. It's like this laptop hasn't been used much. Um, so now that we've accessed the motherboard, let's go ahead and take some measurements. Since it's shorting out the AC adapter, it's probably going to be uh, on the main power rail if there is a short. Um, and this is about the time where you get to guess in the comments what you think is wrong with this. Um, do you think it's a just a shorted capacitor? Do you think it's a shorted MOSFET? Do you think it's a shorted MOSFET on the GPU or CPU? Uh, let's, let's see if we can, if one of you guys can guess before I figure it out. Okay, we're gonna put the meter in continuity mode. It beeps when I touch the two probes together. And let's get under the microscope here. Let's start by checking the main power rail. So here's the DC jack. This is the input DC jack. And um, we can figure out what ground is. So I'm just gonna touch these probes here. And this side, let's see, this side is ground. These pins are ground. This is gonna be positive. So this is gonna be the, the positive voltage coming in. This is gonna be the main current sense resistor that's on the main power rail. This will detect if there's a short circuit and shut off these MOSFETs. Okay, so if we take a look, we're just measuring from ground to the current sense resistor, and we do, we are measuring a short. It is a very low short too. So by looking at this, we got 0 0.02, that's basically zero, okay? And so if we had a short on the GPU or CPU, it would be a little bit higher than that. There is a, a chance that it could still be the, CP, uh, the GPU because the GPU has very low resistance, but right now my thought is it's not gonna be the CPU or GPU because of that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this motherboard completely removed and then we can uh, continue testing. All right, and the motherboard is out. I'm gonna pull the heat sink off too. We're gonna need a thermal paste it anyway, and this makes it a lot easier. If we do end up having to do voltage ejection, we wanna see if the CPU or GPU is heating up anyway, so let's go ahead and get this heat sink removed. I mean, look how clean this is. This is the original thermal paste from seven years ago, and the heat sink is completely clean, and so it's not like this was, had been taken apart and cleaned out. I mean, this person took great care of this laptop. Okay, so we have the motherboard, uh, the bare motherboard here. Let's go ahead and take a look around with the microscope and see if we can see anything obvious. Um, if we do, if, if we can't find the short, if we, if we don't see anything obvious, we're gonna have to use voltage injection where we inject uh, a small voltage into the motherboard and the short will heat up under a thermal camera.
But let's just start out by just looking around under the microscope. Sometimes we can get lucky and just find like a cracked capacitor or, or a burnt component or something like that. So we're going to start over here at the input circuit. This is a, the DC jack. This is where the battery is. A lot of voltage goes through here, a lot of power. It gets hot over in this area. But I don't see anything. And what we're looking for, you see these are capacitors right here. A lot of times you'll see a capacitor and you'll see like a little crack on here or some, a discoloration. And since we see low resistance on the voltmeter, this means that it could possibly be a shorted capacitor. Here's the GPU. These are the dual MOSFET driver packages that power each one of these power stages. So one of these could be shorted because a GPU does have low resistance. Here's the CPU, and then here's its power stages here. Um, we have some discoloration on here on the CPU. That's flux, but it doesn't mean that there's an issue with that. That's the EC chip. That's what talks to the PCH and talks to the power rails to get all the power button, talks to the power button to start up the, the motherboard, and then the PCH, which is the chipset ends up starting all the power supplies on the machine. The, the DC input jacks on the other side here, so these are more protection MOSFETs. They're in parallel with the other side. And here's another current sense resistor. This one probably goes to the battery, but I'm not sure. This is the power management chip. This is what controls the input circuit here. Um, we'll ch control the charging of the battery and then also will shut off these MOSFETs if it detects any overcurrent on these current sense resistors. That's an audio chip. Okay, so I don't see anything obvious. So that means we have to, we're gonna have to move to voltage injection. So the way voltage injection works is I, I have a device here that will produce a low voltage but a high current. On this machine, I can't limit the current, so I always just go with a low voltage. We're gonna start with 0.8 volts. I'm gonna hook one side of the ground. And then the other probe I'll put on a shorted area, which will go on that current sense resistor that we measured earlier. Um, I'll need to set up the thermal camera, so let me get that turned on. Okay, we have the thermal camera going here. And so the thermal camera that I have is a FLIR 1 Pro. I have it mounted here to the bottom of the microscope. And then I have it hooked up to my phone right here. Here's the current sets resistor that we did detect that there was a short on. Let's, let's verify that we still have the short after we took the board out. Yes, and we're showing a point, point 0.2. Okay, that's a very low short. Okay, if we compare the resistance on the GPU, the GPU's resistance is 0 0.04, 0 0.03. Ooh, it's getting pretty close. It could be the same, I still think that's a little higher. And here's the CPU. So the CPU is around six. And some of the other higher power stages on the CPU are three. So the main power rail could be shorted straight to the GPU. I don't know yet, but your guess is down. We're about to, we're about to figure out. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna inject 0.8 volts onto this current sense resistor. And then keep an eye on the thermal camera and let's see what heats up. Uh, I'm gonna have to lower down, <laughs> I'm gonna lower the voltage down because it just hit 10 amps. That means there's a dead short on here. I mean, we're not talking like a CPU type of short. It's gonna be something like a dead short. This is like, it's almost like a wire. So um, let's lower the voltage down to 0.5. We should still get enough current through there. So that's giving us five amps. It's giving five amps at 0.6. So let's see if we can figure out what's getting hot. I'm gonna move my hand out of the way so you can see. Okay, here's the CPU and the GPU. They are not getting hot, but I do see a MOSFET on the CPU getting hot. Do you see that? Try it again. Look at that. Okay, so let's figure out which one it is. This one. So it is this one right here. Okay. So why do you think that one's getting hot?
And we do have definitely a lot of heat over here. Oh, I can actually see it blown out. We looked at this earlier, but I didn't really pay attention to this. Look, at it's all blown out that side right there. See all this kind of liquid stuff? So all this stuff that we saw here definitely blew out the side of this MOSFET. But so here's the good thing. So the short, it's a dead short, okay? This MOSFET is shorting straight from the, our, positive, uh, our positive 19 volt power rail straight to ground. Instead of, a lot of times what happens when these things go out or whenever they short out, they short straight through the actual CPU. And if it shorts through the CPU, then it's sending the 19 volts to the CPU, which ruins the CPU and blows it out. This, this type of short means that the MOSFET itself is shorted and it's what's actually taking all of the, the, uh, the current and the CPU is safe, which is great. So this, there's a high likelihood that I can fix this board. Um, and taking a look at all these chips here, this one looks fine, that one looks fine. This one looks questionable. There's a lot of liquid here um, or, or discoloration. This one's definitely the one that blew out. This one looks okay and that one looks okay. So, and look at this, this is totally different color. So here's what my plane of action is gonna be on this one. Let's go ahead, we'll replace both of these with brand new ones. Um, if I have brand new ones, I may not have a brand new one, but I could put a, I have donor boards. So well, let's replace both of these. And I'm all, I, I normally wouldn't replace a coil because coils generally don't burn out, but the, the coloring of this coil means that there could be internal windings that are shorted out. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this replaced. It's not a big deal. So we'll replace these two in this and see if we can get rid of that short and uh, get this motherboard to power on and post. So let's get going on that. So anybody who actually put down that it was the CPU, they're partially right. <laughs> You're partially right. So it's it, technically it's not the CPU that's shorted out on this. It's the MOSFET that powers the CPU, but it's not sending the voltage through the CPU. So the CPU is probably safe and to probably survive this. So I'm going to start by removing. I'm going to start by removing those two MOSFETs in that coil, and then we'll we'll see if we can get some replacements. We're going to do max heat, 480 degrees, and we're going to do 60 percent air. What we're trying to do, this board is really thick. It's hard to get these uh, MOSFETs off, especially if this one's got cooked and baked on here. We're going to flood it with some flux. And hopefully this chip is not welded to the motherboard. But we need to get in here and get out of here as fast as possible. We don't want to sit here and keep heating the board for a long period of time. Okay, we got the first one off. Let's go ahead and get this other one taken off. Okay, we got the second one off. Let's take off this coil here. This coil looks really bad. I don't think I've ever seen a coil look this bad. Okay, yeah, there's a major issue under here. Let me add a little bit of solder. All right, so I added a little bit of solder. That should help it flow and come off easier. I was having a hard time getting it off the board. But I'm, I'm worried about this side right here. This looks like it completely burned itself off the board. I mean, this issue might have been going on for a while. And I don't know why this doesn't want to come off here. This It's like it's welded. Let me see if I can just break this off. Okay, so we've got that coil off. This looks like this is completely burned off and it's gone. There's no, like no trace there. That's what it looks like to me. Let me see if I can get all this off of here. I don't think I've ever seen a coil this burned up. 
I've never even replaced the coil before, so. I've never seen this uh, level of damage on a coil like that. But let's get this cleaned up. Okay, so we definitely have a missing trace here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Definitely have a missing trace. So here, let's see if we can figure out how this goes. I think off of these pins here, it goes across connects here and then these are connected together these might be going to the CPU and this is definitely coming from the chip I can tell right here so I'm not gonna be able to replace this because there's not really anything to solder to I might I might be able to put it sideways or something like that like try to solder one side here and then the other side you know in this area but what I'm concerned with is you can kind of see this is a, a dividing line. And so this pad right here is one pad. And this right here is one pad. And this is what's connected to this side. And I would not want this chip to interact with this pad right here. So we have an issue. This, I think this board is actually too, it's, it's too far gone to fix, unfortunately. We can try fixing it. It should run off. I could replace this MOSFET right here, and it should be able to run without this one, but I don't I want I don't want to try that. I mean, this is getting been getting hot for a while. This is pretty crazy. Whew. Well, I guess no. I bet no one guessed this because I, I wasn't prepared for this. So at this point, I think I'm going to call it because that type of issue is not really something that I can fix with a trace or something like that. Um, trying to rebuild that connector or trying to rebuild that pad is going to be nearly impossible because there's so much current and heat that's going through there and. To do it reliably and put a warranty on it uh, isn't really practical. So I'm gonna recommend board replacement on this one. This is an older machine, seven years old. Um, these boards are kind of hard to come by. I think I do have some boards, motherboards in stock or are ones that I can uh, sell to them. So um, that I'll, I'll talk to them and see if that, that's an option they want. But at this point, um, maybe even getting a new computer might be worth it. But I mean, that laptop's in really good condition. I've never seen something that clean uh, that is this old. So anyway, um, let me know your thoughts, what you think about this one. And uh, if you wanna see where I actually fixed the CPU, watch this video. I saved another laptop.